Stephen A., how do you see this playing out for PG-13? Well, first of all, this is not news to me. And the reason why it's not news is because Paul George is looking to get his money. You can't get your money if you opt in. You only can get your money if you opt out. So it's not news to me that he's elected to opt out. Of course he was going to opt out. He's due to make $20 million if he had opted in. He's due to make anywhere from 170 to 200 plus million if he opts out. So of course he was going to opt out. That's not news to me. What it tells me though, however, is that the fact that everybody's reporting this, uh, uh, you know, so vibrantly, I think it, it comes down to the fact that Paul George is strongly considering staying in OKC. He wants that money, and the likelihood is that if you end up, if, if he ends up signing, he's either going to sign the stay or sign with a sign and trade. A sign and trade obviously is not going to get it done because if you do a sign and trade, you got to give up so many assets to get Paul George that a lot of people are going to question whether or not that's the case. We might have some debate as to what Kawhi Leonard is worth, Max, in terms of what you have to give up in order to acquire him, but. That is significantly less of the case when it comes to Paul George. You don't mind acquiring Paul George and giving him his dough. But if you got to give him his dough at the expense of losing additional assets for him to join in order to get him on board, that's an entirely different cha challenge that a team like the Lakers and, and Philly, amongst others, may not necessarily want to accept. You don't mind adding him to what you have. But having to give up stuff to get him while also paying him may be too big of a price which ultimately could lead to him being stuck in OKC as well. So this move right here comes down to this for me. Him opting out basically says he's either going to stay in Oklahoma City or accept about $40 million less to go to L.A. Those are the two scenarios. I don't see a sign and trade for Paul George in the works for the future. I see him staying in OKC or going to L.A. for $40 million less. I don't think Philly is in the picture because I don't think that Paul George would go to Philly for $40 million less. And I don't think a sign and trade would be worked out with Philly in order to acquire Paul George. Um, let me tell you what I think is going on here, Stephen A. Mm -hmm. uh, I put myself in Paul George or LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard's shoes, right? Why mm -hmm. does there seem to be this kind of log jam? You know, why has nothing happened yet? Why is LeBron saying, like, you would think, LeBron, just go to L.A. if you want to be in L.A., and guys will meet you there. Why does he need to see Kawhi there first? Why did the Lakers and the Spurs talks break off right away, but now they're back on? Wait a minute. If the Spurs broke off the talks, it's not the Lakers job to put them back on was the Lakers offer too low why wouldn't they just offer assets they had for Paul George and I put myself in Paul George's shoes Stephen A I think to myself I want my cake and I want to eat it too you know why because I'm a human being that's what people want they want everything Paul George not trying to give up 40 million dollars I know oh he has all this money okay easy for other people to say you give up 40 million dollars I don't care how much money you have he's trying to get paid so is Kawhi Leonard who apparently is willing to sacrifice a Supermax contract to leave San Antonio to go to a, his desired destination, but that doesn't mean he wants the low end of what he could possibly get. He still wants the most money he could get. Who wouldn't? And similarly with LeBron James. What, does he want to get paid the least? No. And they all three also know that if they're on the same team, they will win at least a championship. I think that's the end of the Warriors' dominance. Those three players, oh, who else are you going to put on? Don't worry about that. You'll figure that out. You just surround them with shooters. They'll be fine. The three best two-way players in the or three of the four best two-way wings in the game, they're going to be just fine. So what's going on? Well, you're right. Paul George wants the money, so we'd have to do a sign and trade. So the Lakers would need to retain assets. They can't just give the Spurs everything they have for Kawhi. Or what are they going to give up for Paul George? And if they do that, then they only get two of the three, not all three, right? It seems to me if I were Paul George, I would want to communicate with LeBron and Kawhi. I would want to figure out how we all get the money we need you know, most equitably and all wind up in our preferred destination which seems to be, according to various reports for all three, Los Angeles. And so my best guess is some version of that is going on. They need to figure out how to wind up in the same place and all still get paid as well as possible.
Well, listen, I don't think that it's necessary that all three wind up in the same place. And I'll get into Kawhi and some of the news that I have about him right now with the Spurs in L.A. and that whole picture in just a few minutes or so. But I think it's important to recognize uh, that it's looking more and more likely that if the Lakers get anybody, it'll be one or two dudes, but it won't be all three. And it's likely because Paul George is going to end up staying in OKC. I'm not saying that's a definitive. I do not know. Question. Um, but I'm telling Question. you that's the way it's looking. Question. Yeah. Is that because Paul George wants his money and therefore the Lakers can't work out a sign and trade because they want to retain all their assets for Kawhi? In other words, the Lakers believe the home run is LeBron with Kawhi as opposed to Paul George? Well, yeah, to some degree, Max, yeah, but you got to remember, if a trade was what it was all about, the Lakers would have did that last year for Paul George out of Indiana. They would have done that for him last year. So the fact that you were willing to wait until this year, it disrupts the whole game plan if you try to work out some sign and trade deal for him. First of all, that wouldn't make Russell Westbrook happy because Russell Westbrook has a good relationship with Paul George, wants him to stay in OKC, and that would factor into why Paul George would want to stay in OKC. Of course, the money is paramount, but also the relationship with Russell Westbrook really helps because they could be a one-two punch for years to come in OKC, and their relationship is that tight. But if you were the Los Angeles Lakers, and you were to do that now, then that would make you look bad about not doing that last no, year I disagree when you could have made a deal with Indiana for him. Go ahead. I disagree with that because now that he's an expiring deal, or, or now he's that, that he's at the end of his deal, he is worth less in a trade than he was. So the Lakers last year, pre-Lonzo Ball, you don't know how that's going to turn out, but you suspect you have a very high draft pick. And then even when you find out you're going to draft second overall, you're assuming that that number two draft pick, you're hoping, will, and for good reason, will become a valuable trading commodity. No, you're when thinking Paul players. George is a you're, year you're, out, he, he's worth more thinking, than he is right now. And the Lakers didn't know that Lonzo wouldn't be worth a lot on but, the trade market. But, 